All right, we're ready to roll. Looking like a pretty interesting day for price action, and SPY is kind of consolidated into a nice tight wedge at the top of range. Um, looking left, we're kind of seeing this as a, a recurring pattern. This is a healthy looking pullback, unless it isn't. So let's look at the details to our left here. We've seen this before. It's pretty healthy to have a pullback in a strong trend. Um, we've been running these over and over and over again. What's next? Well, let's focus on areas and then decide for ourselves what to do in this occasion. And uh, you may have seen I posted a link to my um, article on the collar strategy. This is a good day to talk about the collar strategy. Uh, what it is is the way to hedge your positions if you're long, net long. Um, it's awesome for hedging any position. Um, it's getting interesting because this pullback can be a little risky at this point because it does look a little bit like a topping pattern. Of course, we have a clean diamond pattern here. Very easy to spot. I marked out this key liquidity zone in orange for a reason. I'll get to that when I drill down into the, into the shorter time frames. But knowing that we're between two known liquidity zones and we're in a area of interest, which is this whole range here, um, is very important. So we're right in the middle of it. Uh, this is known as a mean revision. So if this is your trend up from the bottom, it made a nice two for one bullish move, came down and made a mean revision. So as long as we stay here and we start to see things settle out and the uh, news event coming out Monday with the Dallas Fed manufacturing index stays somewhat um, good, <laughs> we could see a trend continue up from this level and we could walk out. Whenever we see divergence coming coming out of a diamond pattern, usually price does not like to stay there long. So if we break angular resistance, we could certainly see a decent trend day on Monday if things go right. And we can reach all the way to this liquidity zone up here around 442. We could even go and extend further beyond the previous high of the diamond pattern and get into 445 territory later in the week if things are really good. Not so sure what we're up against here. Nothing's really quite priced in about that yet. But if you look at the uh, levels that are kind of um, stated there, uh, it's, a, it's, a, it's a big difference. So we could see things go the other way too. Now we have a bear channel that is generated from the uh, diamond pattern as well. So it can be either a continuation pattern or a reversal as we've come to discuss over the past year and a half. Every time I've spotted these, they usually indicate impending volatility and the outcome is usually pretty predictable for price range. And we've got a descending channel. I've, of course, divided that channel with division lines. So we've got the regression here, the low, the high, angular uh, resistance and support, so on and so on. Divide the channel. Yesterday, we started right at this division line, blasted right up just outside of the angular resistance and came right back into things. But look, what's there? 30 minute 200 period. Why is that important? Because the trend is under it now. Back here, these pullbacks would indicate that the trend was above the 200 period. Let's look further left. Let me go into a two hour chart. You can see I got this massive bullish measured move blocked out here. That's been made. So if we're going to respect uh, this as a support area, we need to figure out where we can be. Well, that's also interesting that the lower liquidity range down here happens to be right at the two hour 200 period. So we could see a trend change resume back down and get an A to B on Monday if things go bad. And this liquidity zone in the middle here becomes our trade plan. So we could see it go from A to B or down through this whole zone, which is about 432 all the way down to about 428. So we've definitely got range to repeat a previous trend in reverse. Uh, we can stack out some measured moves. It can take a day or two to you know flow through that whole zone. But the probability of a breakout from this uh, accumulation pattern is very likely. We just don't have a direction yet. So Kind of um, a great time to consider the collar strategy if you've got a lot invested in this trend and you know you can um, kind of hedge your position with a, with a uh, collar strategy. Two things are going for you. One, participation in the market has been tapering a little bit. So you can see the volume profile down here has been kind of falling off a bit. Um, 
that brings the implied volatility down quite a bit on the options chain, which makes it reasonably affordable to run a collar strategy in this type of scenario. So you can also generate a little income to overstep the cost of the collar by selling covered calls a little shorter. It's a little tricky to find a sweet spot for calendar spreads, particularly on indexes like SPY, but not necessarily for something like TQQQ. So definitely kind of take that into consideration for your options trading in the upcoming weeks. Let me go and double check my audio. I think I'm having an issue here. Nope, we're good. Okay. So moving forward, we could see this thing accumulate and definitely going to see it break eventually. And I think next week, probably starting Monday, we're going to start to see a trend come out of this. Bottom line is be prepared for anything, but um, the best policy is safety. So that's what the, the caller strategy is for. Um, going into shorter time frames, we can see I've marked out a nice bearish measured move for today's opening. Going into the close yesterday, I realized, hey, we had a nice bullish measured move here, one for one, easy to spot. Um, I believe uh, Creed and I clicked glasses and said, yeah, we see these measured moves. We love them. <laughs> we see them everywhere. It's like when you buy a new car and you suddenly see everybody on the road has the same car, same scenario. You start to see, once you've driven enough of these measured moves, you start to see them everywhere. Every time frame matters now. So when you mark them out, you can make trade ideas from that. And if it doesn't get to your target, you have to know when to close up shop and wait for the next setup. There's measured moves within measured moves. This one didn't quite visit the bottom yet. And there's a, still a chance going into something that can be volatile Monday, being a Friday, once all the delta hedging is done by the big houses selling options in this chain, we could see price allowed in the last hour or so of the market time to run right down to the bottom of this. We could see a push right down to 432. Or we could close right in this range, and just stay sideways until Monday. Pretty easy to see. So today is a good day for scalping, day trading, stuff like that. Not necessarily a great day to start your swing trade positions unless you can find either neutral or a hedge position. Uh, just my opinion. Take that as you will. Um, looking into the smaller time frames, of course, this is their expected gap down. Coming into the close yesterday, I've, I was expecting either to open around this area and it did in the pre-market, more or less, or come back and, and go sideways and open around this area. Well, it certainly gapped down that entire move, came down to the middle day low, like clockwork, easy peasy. But now we've got this nice little double bottom looking thing here, and a lot of people will get trapped in this chasing it around. Um, I'm not. I was able to scalp a few moves out of the market this morning and I'm pretty much done for the day. Um, it's just long-term options on equities for me at this point. Um, we'll go over some of that too. But more or less, this is expected to consolidate in here probably through the rest of the day. I don't think it's going to move much today. If it does break out of this line, we know we can get a bull move and come back to a mean revision or maybe poke out of it a little bit to the pre-market high, whatever. That's possible and not necessarily probable, but we'll, we'll see. So definitely a good day for day trading, but definitely be careful with um, holding things through the weekend. And if you've got to hedge it, that collar strategy is going to be a lifesaver. Um, there's a reason why the big houses put on collars, and, and you can see them usually. You know where they are. Moving on, let's go and break down some of Kramer's most wanted. <laughs> um, give me one Kramer's second. Most wanted. <laughs> I got to go mute myself. There we go. Mute, mute myself in the other feed there. Okay, now go back. Do, 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 do. I got to open up the window with all that stuff in it. And then I got to open up another window with other stuff in it. Too many balls in the air here. Bear with me a second. This is why I need a fourth monitor right here. <laughs> All right. So I put a list down on paper and I'll kind of read through some of the stuff here. But let's start with um, top of the list. I just wrote it on an old envelope. <clears throat> First thing mentioned in Kramer's top 10 this morning was Ford. Uh, the car maker is planning a new round of cuts of mostly U.S. salaried workers in the coming weeks, blah, blah, blah. They're trying to ramp up uh, some revenue to push their EV production a little bit, and they got to maintain their margin. So it's understandable to make some cuts and, and try to push things through to kind of change with the leaves. So far, Ford has been very well managed. Um, you know, they... Uh, 
they've held it together. It's done pretty good. Let me go start with the weekly chart and then we'll get down into this business. So a weekly chart, we had this beautiful descending wedge just come to a point and blam, it broke and started walking range expansion outside of it. Some people will see this as the old hourglass. Oh gosh, the widow's going to bite it. It's going to dump over. Yeah, well, there's liquidity zones on top of this to kind of pay attention to. Of course, I marked them all out. If it rejects these and it doesn't go higher than that previous high, sure, we could see a little bit of a pullback down to the mean and maybe even a touch off the weekly um, 200 period down to 10 bucks. It's going to take some money invested in this new EV push. And they're doing pretty well with uh, changing with the leaves and, and kind of rolling with the punches, if you will. And the announcement from uh, Tesla to be um, allowing them access to the supercharger is definitely a bonus. Uh, definitely pushed the price up considerably. Um, looking back, this is a bit of a parabolic move. It's healthy to pull back. And as long as we maintain range on the regression line here from my channel that I built months ago, uh, we're doing good. But if we break below this too much, we could start seeing a bit of a range push kind of uh, reducing that to around 1360 would be a good bear target if this breaks here. But I'm not so sure it's going to do that just yet in spite of today's candle. Let this candle close. And if, if, it, if it closes the inverted hammer, be very um, careful with what you see on Monday because you can either get a quick bearish one for one and end up right down to about 1364. Or you could bounce off of this and see this as a uh, what I would call a three bar setup. Some call it a Busby. Um, others call it a morning star, but this isn't really a star. It's not a spinner. But you get a bar, a doji, hammers can count as dojis, and typically you'll get a bar that runs back up to the high of the previous bar the next day. So if things go good on Monday, we could see it revisit uh, 1420. If things don't go so good on Monday, well, we could see it go and print a one for one down below the regression line. And of course, we can start trending and charting from there. Um, this is a very healthy, healthy pullback. I like this pullback. It's actually a good thing because that trend was pretty parabolic. Um, it gave us a very clean two for one measured move. Pretty good stuff. I love trading forward. It's a great options test bed for building your ability to trade option strategies, both simple and complex. And you can really make uh, for some some really uh, good trades in this guy. And at the same time, it's, it's for as far as options trading goes, uh, we talk about the trader's tuition, the amount of money you're going to lose learning. It's actually pretty reasonable if you start learning options on Ford. It's, it's very inexpensive to trade options on Ford, and you can really make some uh, some good use of time learning without blowing through your whole account, uh, as long as you're reasonable with your sizing. And, you know, I always recommend new traders, regardless of account balance size, uh, go with one or two. Start learning the process first, then become consistent with profiting after you've become consistent with profitable trading in a small position you can start sizing up a little bit and start building a position in Ford um, because you can actually have a great time wheel trading this too it's not the best yield but it's got great predictable price action um, it's got a great ability to be kind of charted very easily and you can stay ahead of things pretty well plus Overall, it's it's profit. I mean, if you can nail at least 2% a month on this thing with the um, outlay that you put into a wheel trade on this thing, you're doing good. You're still beating market performance, so don't don't knock yourself. Uh, later on, you can take some more funds and put it into another wheel trade once you develop the process. And that's great. Ford is awesome for that. Um, when it comes to uh, swing trading for it, it's, it's actually pretty great to do that as well, swing trading and day trading. Um, Pardon teenager walking by in the background here. You can go and, and learn how to trade price action very well on Ford. And we drill down into shorter time frames, and we can see there's pretty easy stuff to see. Um, we can spot really quick measured moves in it. You know, there's a nice little one for one on the opening and a one for one back to support on the on the middle of the day. It's also great for tracking this price action to build into neutral op options positions to trade a break later. Uh, you can roll things. You can do all the stuff you want to do with options trading, learning, and forward. And you can learn price action to boot. If you were just starting out as a as um, learning how to trade price action, one or two shares in this thing, 14 bucks, very low risk. And it doesn't necessarily move with 
much volatility like a penny stock would. However, we did have a nice day yesterday. That was a good rally. Um, moving forward, I'll go into a couple more equities. And, and the list isn't very long on Kramer stuff today. And I've already burned up about 15 minutes, but we got plenty of time to get the rest of it out. Um, I got a comment here. Let's see here. Da, 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 swing trader idea on oil. Yeah. That is um, the thing with oil. And I, I want to touch oil a little bit today, but I'm probably going to. Um, I'm going to look for rotation. And like I said before, um, I watched WTI. You know what? Let's look at it real quick. WTI is an interesting equity. It is a producer. It is dirt stinking cheap. You can wheel trade it with decent yield, but the options um, liquidity is not great. But the charting is easy. That descending trend is, I mean, unmistakable. Um, you've got a descending wedge here and it could hold this angular support um let me borrow a line i'll draw it for you it could hold this angular support for a little while and bounce off of it it's also right on the regression line of that descending channel on the daily we could see this thing start to rotate this is where i start looking for rotation and looking left we can see it's been there before and rotated there before so yes and no um on on jumping into this but it's great to track the producers, and this is one of the you know offshore producers that is still sustainable as a business. I mean, yeah, they're trading at penny stock stock prices, but it's a good one to watch. When the producers start making money on their yield, so do the um, uh, refiners, and usually the producers will tend to front run the refiners. So, as oil prices fluctuate, of course, the the outcome of it is going to be on margin, and that margin changes greatly really rapidly with per, with uh, refiners, whereas it's more subtle with producers. So watch it for rotation. Um, certainly keep it on your watch list to keep an idea of what's going on with oil in general. It's one of the last good ones that gives you good indications of sector rotation. Uh, you could also go and, and look at uh, USO, of course, and find your rotation there too. But I, I like this better because this is more based on the re, uh, the producers then as opposed to the refiners and producers let me go to uso real quick it's the uso you don't really have any signals there other than just a channel to trade so <clears throat> not a lot going on i'm waiting for that to push above the 64 dollar line before i can start looking at it for a bearish move but let's look left dude big old bullish one for one that's right middle guys that's a mean revision and we're under it so what's left well i'll draw the boxes for you but you can see it with your naked eye pretty easy if things don't go great for oil, this is a bearish measured move setup, plain and simple. We could see it hit about 53.30, 53.40 in this move, just looking at this previous trend. So wait for the rotation. It'll tell you when to get in. Eventually, this range will break, and when it does, you're going to know, and you'll know where the targets are. It'll be pretty easy to see. We've been there, done that before. Um, heck, you could see this nice little bearish one for one here that occurred some time ago. It's really easy to spot these things. And like I said, uh, with Creed and I clinking glasses in the chat earlier, <laughs> measured moves, man. We love them. We see them everywhere. Just like the whole thing, driving the same car as everybody else. <laughs> so anyway, keep an eye on the sector. But I certainly like to look at the producers first, and then I'll look at the refiners. And this is certainly just kind of a mix of a, a bit of all of it. Um, moving on. So we got Uber. Let me get the... Uh, List up here. No, no, CMT's first. Got some price target moving. They're moving the goalpost, guys. How about that? So, analysts have bumped the price target on CMG um, up to 2300 Holy smokes. That's up here. Well, this thing has been a beast. It is. One old adage of, you know, um, self-service and the restaurant industry does not disappoint when it comes to selling service. That's eh, close enough. <laughs> Make it purple and fudge with it for a moment here. I don't want to spend too much time, of too much of your time, you know, wasted on drawing pictures and stuff. So there we go. It's closer. I'll lock it now. Okay. That is the analyst target. We've got a one-for-one one done across this revision line right here. 
I had marked a support area here at the top of that gap because I was expecting if this is going to be a bearish pullback or reversal up here, this diamond pattern I was watching, that's going to be the bear target for a pullback, about half of mean revision, whatever you want to call it. The other alternative is, let's draw it. <laughs> let's see, I'm going to go probably about here. telling you these boxes have been serving me well guys i love drawing them all right so there's our one for one it kind of exceeded that we're consolidating in the two for one area and it gets us pretty close to that 2300 target if it breaks out we could fudge it and adjust it to the mean here but this looks like a topping pattern first so keep the mean below the average or keep the mean at the, about the low of that consolidation. That's the line you want to watch for a rejection and a breakdown to retrace this guy and maybe even close this gap back down to ground zero for a full mean revision. That can happen. Um, my target on the bull side, though, if this thing continues to run and roar, and it certainly has shown the potential to do so, I would say it would be about 264, 250 to 264 would be reasonable. 2300 that's kind of stretching it, but, uh, well, that's one hell of a trend. <laughs> Cup and handle, of course, you can see that right here. That's pretty easy. You got rim line one, rim line two. Drew that, been there, done that. Pulled back, made the handle here, ripped, roared. It met its cup and handle breakout target here anyway. So even though it got the upgrade... I would say be a little cautious of that at first. Let it consolidate. Let it give you a signal on whether to continue, um, you know, chasing that dream or not. From there, um, other than that, it's it's a matter of um, you know they're they're recovering from price target bumps from like meat prices and stuff like that, and you know there'll, there'll be some momentum in here. Um, but effectively, we're gonna let the chart tell us what to do on this. That's just what I do. It's price action. Plain and simple. Uh, moving on to Uber now. Um, Uber, they get a um, a bump in price target as well from Barclays there. Let me throw Uber on the grid. So they're bumping it to, let's see here, 57 from 45. And uh, damn, that's a hell of a jaunt. <laughs> Way up there. Hey, I got close enough. Better lock it, because I have a habit of dragging these things around. That is redonkulous, but look left. We've been here before. This is more reasonable. So when you get this upgrade, all right, I'll play ball. So let's watch on this one. We've got a nice one for one, very similar to what Tesla did coming out of that descending channel. Mean revision of this entire trend, right smack where we're at about right now just kind of using my eyeball that's about your mean revision there we're above it so i've marked this out on amazon the same way it's it's now um, exceeding it amazon price target got bumped uh, i think from 150 to 170 or something like that i'll look later um pretty insane but things are moving so one for one was done now we've reset very similar to tesla we came back mean revision new trend so we got one for one now, a two for one wouldn't even get us close to that $57 target, but it would be more like looking left and finding where previous highs have been. It'd be much more efficient at trading. So let's go ahead and draw. Don't you guys love watching me draw pictures yet? <laughs> I enjoy drawing them, I really do. Price action can be simple. It doesn't have to be so complex, but it's good to learn all the complex stuff before you get to simple. Know how the machine works before you go and play with the little pieces. All right, so new trend could set up like this. Watch for consolidation and continuation. First target for a one-for-one -one out of this big parabolic gap up jump here from earnings will be right there at about $46. That would be a good first target. Not much higher than it is now. Reasonable. So if you're already long on this thing, it's a reasonable um, point to take profit, wait for consolidation, and see if this two-for-one plays out. I don't know about the $57 target just yet, but um, I would say if it 
starts to eke out of that th that two for one, you can certainly look at about fifty four bucks. It's pretty reasonable. Um, yeah, I'll put this on the watch list. I think I'm gonna mark that one. All right, next one, uh, DRI. This was an interesting thing. So they get a target lift um, from Barclays again uh, to 177 from 173. Let's pull DRI up. Hey, Pam. Whoops, I got an open mic here. Hold on. <laughs> awesome. There we go. That's better. Okay. DRI looking at um, another restaurant industry leader and man, nice trends, great dividend stock. A lot of people love this one. Um, you're looking at continuation. We've got one for one done, meet revision done, new trend. So yeah, we could see this, but we've got one, two, three for one done here. Let's check that price target again. Let's see. They put it at 177 from 173. It's not much higher. It's Pretty reasonable. What we're looking at right there. Nope, close enough. Let's say 177. Yeah, we'll call it that. So we're looking at a pretty good strong trend. Let's see what the daily says here. Two, we got three. I'd love to see this pull back and consolidate around 158.80 first. So we could finish a move to 177, but I'm, I'm a little skeptical of running there right away. I think I'd wait for this to shake out and consolidate in here first before I went there. So let's start this as completion of a two for one from here, because we've seen most of our mean revision here. Price action point of view would say, yes, we can hit close to uh, 177, but We'll take this into account. I'm going to drag this one. Takes us to the top of parabolic size from mean. Let's look and see if it hits uh, 169 first, and then maybe we get the mythical three for one that would take it right to that 177. But be skeptical of that. Um, I would wait for consolidation and a signal before I traded that. Just my opinion. Sorry about all the background noise. I've got a house full of kids. <laughs> Okay, next one. Um, 3M got a downgrade, more or less. They're they're just uh, selling a lawsuit or whatever. Yeah, that's that forever chemical deal. Um, realistically, uh, ten point three billion dollars out of their out of their market cap. That's gonna feel a little bit, but that's kind of priced in here. We've got all the bear moves already done. Previous support levels, um, right around 100 bucks. We broke over an M top. This is starting to look like market structure usually looks right here. We could see it go lower from here until this is all cleaned up, but um, we're certainly at a key level, 100 bucks. So anybody's game at this point, I would say I'm a bit neutral on this one, but not interested in trading it yet. Um, this bearish one for one was pretty easy. There was the mean revision line. It was a decent bear trade not too long ago, but from here, I don't see this bouncing back up through resistance to get there again yet. We got to wait and see what happens at 100 bucks first. I'm going to skip this one because there's really no point in, in watching something that you're not expecting to move. Let this shake out. It could very well consolidate um, well into the end of July here, just kind of looking left and maybe print a reversal in here. But I would wait. That That's definitely going to be something to just hands off until you see something worth trading on that. Um, Starbucks. Ugh. I'm, I'm not a union hater, but man, once they uh, start striking on you, you you got to change your uh, game because you're basically being forced to. Well, when all your employees are threatening to walk out today and, and start striking, uh, not all the employees, but 150 stores worth. That says something. So we've got this big old, I mean, obvious megaphone pattern, top of a trend. We've traded these before. I love megaphones. 
they will typically make a measured move down from regression outside of the break. So watch for your support break here. If you want to be a bear, this is a decent setup. We've got a one leg, a two leg, and a three leg on the way. Usually I just mark the measured move and drop it below the channel. Target would be about $88 and some change on this move if it breaks the support level. That megaphone is threatening to break here. It hasn't broken yet, but look, there's one inside of the megaphone right here to boot. So we get short-term targets of this to this. So we could almost print two different trade ideas on the same block. There you go. So you got two targets. First target's about $92. Second target, about $88. That's simple. I'll leave that on, on the chart. That's a good bearish setup. I like it. So it's not necessarily a good thing when your business uh, is going to suffer some revenue losses from you know a, a large employee strike, and, and plus you know people might be put off from going there. It's not a good thing. I don't uh, I don't want to throw shade at any unions, but that's just how it goes sometimes. And we've seen the woes with the big three automakers in the same light. I mean, it just it does definitely has an effect on their bottom line. And uh, you know CEOs and management have to listen and um, treat their people right. I, I love the fact that the union is there to support people, but uh, the fact that uh, they don't do it for free kind of also irks me. But eh, that's political stuff. I don't go there. I just took, I just trade the price action. <laughs> so looking like a decent bear setup. Of course, wait for this critical support to snap um, right around uh, ninety-eight bucks, maybe a little lower. Once we see that start to break down, we could certainly see this bear flag take effect and give us a two for one measured move first and then a bigger measured move second. That's on my radar. I like that one. I'll mark it for bearish. All right. Next, we got UA. I love it when Kramer talks about penny stocks. because it, it just usually provides liquidity for options. I don't necessarily want to trade options on this anymore. I, I did back in uh, this area here around, you know, from that $8 push to 20, that was pretty sweet. I'm pretty much done with UA for now. Made a nice bearish move, but it just really wasn't worth trading for me uh, to short that or go bearish on it. Leg down, megaphone pattern right here. You can see it, it broke down, made a measured move out, and then made a two for one out even lower to the previous support area. Pretty simple stuff. That took a long time, though. It just wasn't very fruitful to go short on that for trading, uh, you know, um, interest payments on short positions or tra uh, trading time decay on options positions. That's a weekly chart, dude. Those are weekly candles. Unless you can swing trade with some serious time on your hands, it really wasn't worth going short on that. I did go bullish on it. Um, I did wheel trade it a little bit, selling some options on there, and I pretty much just dissolved the position in this channel. It wasn't really worth holding on to after that point. But now we're back to an area of interest. So <clears throat> let me see what they said about it. Um, Wells Fargo downgraded it. Okay, so they dropped the price target to 8 from 12. That's reasonable because it's already below 8. <laughs> <laughs> okay, let's throw that on the grid anyway. So we got um yeah, right around eight bucks. My drawing tool's wigging out on me again, sorry. Make it a purple line and lock it. There we go. So we're gonna consolidate here. Can we go lower? Sure, there's a measured move set up here. Um we could see it go all the way down to like reverse split territory. Oh, or we could hold this level. So let's look further left and see what we got to work with here. Well, all time low down here at $1.49. That'd be cool. I wouldn't mind really trading it back up from there, but I want to wait and see. If we break this level, and we have, and we're consolidating below this level here, this is control bars for penny stocks. I used to always look at the previous bull trend to figure out where the revision targets were coming out for reversals and short squeezes. Easy trading. Um, you look at a weekly chart, sometimes you can look at a monthly chart and spot them and just clean house from A to B. You go from control candle top to control candle bottom, easy plays. Look where my cursor lines up, right in the bottom of this zone. If it breaks it, we're pretty much on point for a measured move to about $4.50. Let's go and look at the 15 minute chart and see something real quick here. So we've got one, two, three for one, or three blocks here, two for one measured move. 
uh, we've hit kind of that support level and look we found buyers there's a big wick right there so if it'll bounce back to eight from here after a downgrade yes it's possible every time i hear any analyst say the word downgrade i'm looking at the price action so I'm going to watch for consolidation and maybe at least a mean revision to scalp it, uh, possibly back up to these control levels previous in the trend. Um, or it might even be worth selling some equity on or some premium on that. I'll have to look at what the options chain looks like. If, it, if it'll do better than 20% a month natural yield on selling calls and puts on it, I might consider it. But um, I don't want to have to bail on it like I did with um, um, MULN. <laughs> I, I did get out with a profit on that, but by the skin of my teeth, because I know that if you track your cost basis on a position and it breaks or threatens it, just bail. Don't even bother trying to make premium on a, on a falling knife. Wait for it to shake out, settle for a while and go sideways and start to accumulate into a new trend. So um, speaking of MULN, what was it down to like 16 cents? Damn, it just had a reverse split. So maybe i'll be able to sell options again on that one day but for now i'm just i'll wait i got time i got better things to do with my money so looking at this thing it's kind of the same thing um under armor clothing and apparel company they can have some issues here trying to move apparel it's a very saturated market there's a a long um a long thin line between profitable and not profitable in that kind of industry and if you're a boutique brand cool you can kind of maintain some clout and pull up uh look at like um some of the cosmetic companies you know they, they stay boutique and try to keep their own stores going that tends to be a little better revenue generator over time but over the short term um this is looking like we're looking for support here and we'll probably find it right around um six bucks if we can if we break that and go down to that 450 target well hey there's just going to be opportunities for someone to do something with it i want to say sit on this keep an eye on it don't uh don't stay in any position until you see a signal to get a position and um, so i'm certainly not going to sell premium on that thing unless i can yield better than the declining trend and i'm not going to do it in this trend i'm going to wait for a reversal um Let me go and look at a couple more things here. Uh, we've got oh Carmax, yeah, okay. Did some decent um, decent earnings on that KMX. Yep, definitely a pop there, right? Have a look at the daily chart earnings we swung out of this channel i've been running this one for a while easy mean reversion and looking pretty bullish but wait for this to consolidate here and i'll start drawing the uh, shorter term stuff on it in a moment um, we've certainly made our measured move already and i'll go ahead and draw all that real quick on the daily and then we'll get into some tighter time frames to figure out what to expect for this thing to consolidate Bam, we're above it. We're into the two for one area. And that takes us right to a mean revision. Isn't it neat how that happens? Descending channels love doing this. This is the um, classic setup. I love trading mean revisions, man. They're just bread and butter. This is actually pretty good. I wish I would have got into this before earnings, but I wasn't paying attention. Um, looking at the company i mean you know if you if you manage a, a car dealership right um you know even some of the scummiest used car dealers on the on the you know bad end of town are still in business for a reason because they know how to manage it as unscrupulous as their practices may be they they do well um effectively when you are selling used cars like carmax and you're basically um big boxifying the uh the entire market on that well, you've got opportunities and they certainly have proven that they've done well with it. So definitely watch for accumulation in this area on this guy, price action wise. I would love to see a pennant here closing on um, and through Monday and Tuesday. If it holds the support area and gives us a, a sign that this trend is going to continue, I can put a price target on that of $94 pretty comfortably. 
Um, and that's certainly right about where that mean revision is, 94.50 to 95.50 is the area. Draw that with a crayon. Give yourself some range, some wiggle room when you see those. And certainly pay attention when there's a gap. I split the difference on this gap right here on a daily chart, but I can mark that as a range as well. Also take a note. When you see this right here on a daily chart, you want to mark that zone. That's going to be where your sellers are going to wait. So this previous high right here and that range of that wick on that candle is going to be important. So let's mark that in an area of interest. So this is going to be a liquidity zone. So if you can break that, you'll finish the target to the mean revision. You can even remain bullish after that and start retracing this entire trend for all that matters. But in the short term, this gives you a great idea of short term price targets. And look, I can take my cursor and line up this daily candle here that we pushed up from earnings right to this guy. I'd love to see this consolidate within range of this control bar right here. And even though we don't have a wick to look for liquidity here, this is a known range. There will be bag holders. There will be people who chase this trend up, bought it here, and are still holding the bag today. That's where they unload, right at the top of that thing. That becomes an area of interest. So I'm going to throw a pivot line there and note that candle is in control. So if we see a break above it with a nice clean consolidation and revision, we could certainly see a good time to take a bull trade and finish the move that's expected to mean revision. And of course, look for that liquidity. So you get a trade of about um, 86.70 to about $92 is reasonable. And you can make some serious options returns and something like that still. Let it shake out a little bit. Let it consolidate after this earnings blast. And you can certainly find some opportunity on that once all the implied volatility falls out of the options chain. This is a nice, clean-looking pendant on the five-minute chart. And look, right to that control area, even though we blew through it a little bit in the pre-market, we're settling right around there. Expect that consolidation. Look for support here. It's a pretty easy one to chart. I love these kind of setups. This is a really good one. I wish I would have got in before the earnings, but that's okay. I can still ride the outcome of it and have price targets in place. Very similar to current Tesla positions. Um, you know, it's just a matter of waiting for everything to shake out, consolidate, resolve, and resume. Um, as a, a good friend of mine, um, I'm making making headway to talking to this dude, a friend of mine um, on YouTube there has pinned to the center of his screen at all times. It says, um, react, don't predict. So when you see the setup, you're going to want to react to it. You can predict the pop. Prob uh, probable outcome just fine, but you're going to react to when it tells you to take that action. So if you see a previous trend and you see a range and you see accumulation and you see a potential for a measured move breakout, and that's why we love them so much, we can get a very good trade idea. And I'll draw this briefly and then I'll delete it. But look, let's take this to about the mean of current consolidation on this earnings blast drag the box up to the mean. Where does it go? Right to that supply zone. All right. This is where you can really rely on your price action trading, just looking left on your chart. You can find these zones pretty easy and you can find setups and then you just react when it breaks resistance and starts to resume a trend. Now you've got something you can react to instead of try and predict because you're already in motion. I'm going to delete that for now because I already know it's there. It's just making my chart more messy. I like to chart nasty, but not that nasty. Come on now. Okay, <clears throat> moving forward. Um, oh, this is an old school one. It's a single letter ticker, Wayfair. My goodness, I haven't traded Wayfair. I don't think I've ever traded Wayfair. Nope, never traded. <laughs> Getting interesting though. We're back into uh, kind of some early days here. This is uh, 2014 back here, okay? So this is um, interesting territory. Let's see what we got. This might give us a decent setup. So we've got a range accumulating here. We've got some pivots to definitely mark there. Kind of keep an eye on that high. We know there's liquidity here. We can mark that with the um, supply zone because we're going to see some sellers there, I'm sure. We've got a reversal underway. We've broken a mean reversion. And we're kind of starting to trend. This might get interesting here. Uh, let me read what they said about it. They upgraded it to hold from sell at uh, uh, Moffitt and 
Nathanson, which said data strongly suggests the home furnishings retailer is seeing <clears throat> material benefit from the recent bankruptcy of Bed Bath & Beyond. Yeah, okay, take some market share. Um, as long as they're reasonably priced, they could uh, see some definite returns from that, definite gains from that. And, you know, looking at this descending, it's not quite the descending channel I like to trade because it needs to have more range in that in that descent, but at least it still has a revision line. I'm going to mark that area because I can see it straight off of this little spinner right here. Oop, let's mark that range. That is a revision line. Check it out. 200 period happens to stripe right through that sucker. That's a good zone. If we see it break resistance here, we could certainly see it push on up to 157-ish. Okay, uh, they didn't give a price target on that um, on that upgrade, but uh, I think probably by next week um, somebody's going to come out with one. So pay attention to that. I don't even bother looking left in the in the news section to see what previous price targets were. I just want to know what's current. Um, looking at this consolidation, we know uh, from price action trading, all ranges do break. Um, they do eventually break either bullish or bearish, but your idea is to trade, or your um, you know strategy is to trade the break, of course. I always say that. Don't trade the setup, trade the break. So this is potentially a reversal, but it's not finished yet. It's got to confirm above previous resistance. It's got to get through this zone to start resuming some of this trend. And this can certainly still be a big old bear flag. You never know. Um, we're going to have to wait and see what happens with the industry, but for now... They do have some market share coming from the falling out of Bed Bath & Beyond. All right, we could see some consolidation, but take this to heart. This trend and this looks a lot like a bear flag. You can get a nasty bearish measure to move out of that. That would be bankruptcy territory. But look at this. If it consolidates and breaks back up, this can still count as a reversal. It isn't an area of interest of previous lows. We could see something go bullish out of this. And my goodness, that's some nice range. A lot of time involved in that range. That, that could be a decent um, long-term trade for sure. Let's break down the daily chart. Um, we have a two-for-one is basically completed here. You can see pause candle right there. So you got move one, move two, move three. Let's see some consolidation. We could very well see a two, bigger two-for-one if you take this entire trend as a box. Um, it would actually go up to about 62-ish. So taking that as a one for one would put us up here above 85 bucks but it's got to break that resistance so keep an eye on this thing i'm going to watch this for some continuation and maybe start looking at the option chain on if it's worth trading i might do it so i'll keep that one as a um, watch list so i've got three on the watch list so far with uber starbucks and wayfair um last on the list and we got about 10 minutes to complete here so i'm timing this pretty well over time um, looking at dun, 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 ACN downgraded to hold from buy at TD Cohen. Okay. Uh, the analyst says further deterioration in demand signals at the consulting company is leading to inter, uh, incremental. Sorry, my reading sucks right now. I can't see. Incremental uncertainty, estimated risk, and an unfavorable risk reward on the shares. I love hearing downgrade. Let's have a look at the price action. They didn't give a price target. Um, shares are off by 1.5% Friday. Yeah, yeah. Okay. Let's pull down a bit. Let's look left. Dang, if that's not a cup and handle. <laughs> so I love hearing downgrade because I love to um, kind of test the theory. And this has met its regression. For this whole move that's kind of the uh, mean revision we look for 50% retracement there's a million ways to call it but if you call it you better learn to dance to it um, let's have a look at some shorter term and see where we're at so we've got a one for one and a mean revision underway we could probably see support around 290 ish let's see if we can get to that um, support area I don't want to put this on the swing trade list just yet, but I want to watch when it gets to that area. So let me put an alert on. Uh, let me see here. Let's put an alert so if it crosses it, we'll know. 
So I'm going to set it right around here, around 289, which is about the mean revision in this whole trend. And if it breaks below that, I'm going to start taking interest in looking for swing trades on this thing, whether bullish or bearish. But right now, I'd rather wait and see. Uh, sometimes when things get a downgrade, you'll notice on shorter time frames, you'll see a dead cat bounce and a double bottom. And we have, with that, a couple other areas of interest. We want to mark previous high. And that is our resistance zone. So if we do actually get a nice double bottom reversal out of this, it's got to confirm above this level. So look for 307.80 for being your resistance point. Current support is going to split the mean between here and here. Or draw a liquidity zone. This is where a demand zone is. Pretty obvious. So let's stretch that out on the chart and just kind of keep an eye on it. And we know if it breaks down to my alert zone, I might start taking interest in it. Um, I'm going to set a secondary alert on that resistance too, so I can kind of keep an eye out for um, if this thing's going to uh, break that zone at all. I want to know. Definitely interested in trading this one. Um, it's an old hand, been around a while. I don't even know what they really do. It's a consulting firm. Price action is what I focus on. Looking left, that's just one big old cup and handle. We could see some trending out of this. We could certainly see some trade opportunities out of this as long as it doesn't go and revert this whole trend. When you see these, it's usually not likely. This is a continuation pattern, not a reversal. Um, oftentimes, I've heard rookie traders call a cup and handle a reversal pattern. They start looking for rounding bottoms at the bottom of somewhere and call it a cup and handle. Wrong. It's a continuation pattern. Do your research. <laughs> so... When you see these things, take note because they have interesting points. So you get a couple rim lines, and these are just going to be marking areas of interest. So if we break this resistance level, we're likely going to you know, head up in the target range. We could see it even hit the second rim line, which I'm going to mark as the previous high before this parabolic high. And I'd like to see it creep on up there. This is a weekly chart. It's going to take some time. Creep on up there and then pull back to this support area and then resume a trend. So over years, this thing could be worth looking at. Um, certainly pay attention to it. We might get a good swing trade out of it. And I'm sure it's got pretty pretty decent price action to trade ahead and um, may even have some options chain. I'll have to look and see what the liquidity is like on this one. I haven't looked at it yet. But I'll certainly take interest in it. And I think that's going to about do it. So I've got three solid ones. Uh, solid trades on the radar. We've got um, Uber looking uh, for a quick little bullish scalp. Uh, we've got 3M, a possibility of a swing trade up or down on that one. And then we've got um, Starbucks as a bear trade. That's looking pretty damn bearish. Um, Wayfair, we'll wait and see. But I'll put them on the list, and I'll certainly put my um, chart analysis in focus on our watch list, and um, I can certainly transfer some of those notes over to you guys later on. Thanks for watching. It's been fun. I love digging through uh, CNBC and uh, thusly Jim Cramer's picks and kind of analyzing them. It's been great. I don't want to throw shade or sunlight at the guy. I just want to analyze his watch list. <laughs> You know, it's great because it's a uh, it's an easy way to have a consolidation of a few stocks to look at instead of picking through hundreds of things that show up on a scanner. For me, if everybody else's attention's on it, I want to know. And when I see those and they're all in one place, pff, convenience, hello, and I can find usually one or two or even three decent swing trade setups pretty much every week so far for the past uh, six weeks I've been doing this. So I'm with it. Um, I would love to keep doing this. And, um, if you guys, uh, want to throw me some, um, some attention for that, uh, feel, feel free to follow me on my new kick channel. I've, um, gone under the moniker, just scalp it J, which is my, my Twitter moniker. I went and started an Instagram yesterday for it. And I've got a kick channel where I'm just streaming some of my stuff, uh, independently just to kind of get it out there. I want to build a following and kind of give people an idea of, um, how to analyze their stocks. I love teaching people things as I can. And um, if I can teach option strategies, price action strategies, all that stuff, I enjoy it. And I get to learn while I do it, best of all. Plus, after a while, you get enough people that you can talk to and, and networking. Um, building a circle of people you can talk stocks with is absolute awesomeness because it's pretty rare to find them in your neighborhood. I might get one or two in my 
immediate neighborhood. And within a three mile radius, I've got a group of like 18 people who I talk to on, on a regular basis locally about stocks. And it's kind of rare. It's not, it's not for everybody. And there's, there's an, a, a small list of friends that you can encircle yourself with when it comes to that. So that's what a community is about. You're just getting together, talking stocks, trading analysis and trade ideas. And that's, that's a great thing. You just communicate and, and you kind of pay your knowledge forward too. And you're always able to be in a, a position of being able to show some people some things that they may not, might not know. And at the best part is that you get to learn things. I'm always learning. Um, ask anybody in the BB community. They've watched me learn some new stuff over the past year and a half that it just, it blows my mind. Um, and then to go and be able to pay it forward and teach it and show the evolution process, that's been absolutely rewarding. And I, I love that. That has been awesome for me. And I want to keep doing it and I want to expand into um, more and more circles. So I'm networking. I'm always networking. So I decided to just, you know what, I want to throw a personal kick channel together, get in on the ground floor of a, of a new streaming platform that's in beta and take advantage of uh, some of the benefits that can come from that as well. And then at the same time, I'm getting out in front of more people and just kind of um, building community networking that's what i love networking is life that's my moniker on my tw uh, twitter account so thanks again guys we will see you next week and i will um definitely try and pull off something in the middle of the week too i'm going to start um putting some stuff out there uh wednesdays or thursdays respectively just to kind of follow up on some of the swing trade ideas i've come out with and also maybe put a couple new swing trade ideas together because why not thanks again for joining me we'll see you guys around